Hello and welcome back. My name is Erin L. Ferguson, and this is my video series about creating the art for a 2D video game. Today's episode is going to be another landscape type painting, and these are a little bit rare on my channel. Not because I don't like to do them, because I actually really do. But most of the art that we need to make this game tends to be the more flat, 2D sort of variety. So that's mostly what I do. I do a lot of characters, I do a lot of animals, I do a lot of props and interior scenes. But every now and then we actually need like a full sort of painted background. I did do one for our title screen a while back. You may remember that bit of uh, that video if you've been watching for a while. So I did do like a full um, painted background for that. And then today I'm doing a little bit of a background for our fishing mini game. So in our game, I think I've mentioned before, but one of the activities that you can do is fishing. And so I've been trying to work ahead a little bit, and this week I've been working on a lot of the assets and things we're going to need uh, for you to be able to actually go fishing in our game. So earlier this week I made like the fishing pole, and I made a few of the uh, fish you'll be able to catch, and icons and everything to represent all of those. But we thought it would be cool if fishing was actually its own separate little mini game. Now we haven't actually nailed down what that's going to look like yet. <laughs> so this background is subject to change, but I thought we would need some kind of a backdrop for uh, the fishing mini game. And I thought, well, an underwater scene was probably a pretty safe choice for that. So that's what I'm doing here today. Uh, again, this is subject to change. If we decide we're doing something else with the mini game, we may not use this or we may use it somewhere else, but I figured we might as well have it done and it didn't take that long to do, so why not? And in the game, you'll be able to go fishing in, you know, a number of places. There will be ponds, there will be rivers, there's the ocean, and you will be able to catch different fish in different places. So there will be, you know, freshwater fish that you can catch in like the rivers and ponds, and then saltwater fish that you can catch out in the ocean. And potentially there might even be some special fish that you can only catch like deep sea fishing. So we have a character um, who can take your can take the player character out on a boat and you can go, you know, deep sea fishing with him. So there might be some more rare things you can catch there. Or things that your peasants can catch for you, you know, if they go out on their boats and go fishing and um, they'll be able to bring in uh, uh, fish that way too. So I was debating, you know, what kind of underwater background I could do because I thought, well, it didn't really make sense if I had like a coral reef, but your character is actually fishing in the river. And so I decided to do more of a riverbed sort of scene. I feel like this could apply almost anywhere. The bottom of the ocean kind of looks like this. The bottom of a river kind of looks like this. So it kind of, we cover all our bases that way. And it also helped that before I even started this piece, you know, I went on Google, went on Pinterest, and I just went on a reference dive, you know, just started looking for images of riverbeds so I would have something to work from. And the colors of a lot of these photographs were absolutely spot on perfect. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I use, I picked out a color palette at the very beginning when we started working on this project and I stick to it pretty closely so that the game has a very cohesive sort of look. And our color palette has a lot of greens and blues in it. And when I looked at these photos of these, uh, of the river, uh, all of these riverbeds, uh, the, they just, the, the colors were fantastic. You know, the most beautiful greens and blues and yellows you've ever seen in your life. And so I was basically very easily able to just use the colors we already had and I didn't have to fudge anything. And so it should re look really good next to all of our other assets. One thing I did notice though, as I was wrapping up this piece is that I think I, I leaned a little bit too heavily towards the greens and yellows. Like I, I absolutely love it. Like I love that color, but I feel like it gives this underwater scene a kind of mysterious quality. And I'm not sure if that's exactly what I was going for, because like I said, this will be a mini game. So I thought maybe it should have a bit more of a cheery vibe. So at the very, very end, one of the very last things I do is I basically add like a photo filter on top just to make it a little more blue. And that's where I think it really kind of came together and it stopped looking like, I mean, it just looked kind of eerie and I didn't really want that. And then at the end, I feel like it looks a little more cheerful. So it's amazing how just like a little bit of a color tint can really go a long way toward changing the whole mood of a piece. I think I've probably mentioned it on this channel before, but I just really like drawing rocks. Like I know that's probably not everybody's cup of tea, but I just really like drawing rocks. Like there's something about just like chiseling out all the little planes and creating all the texture on there that it just gets me into this nice like zen-like state. So it's like very meditative almost. So I actually really enjoyed this piece. And because it is something I enjoy doing, it takes, I mean, I think this whole piece start to finish, I mean, it took a few hours, but that's 
you know, that's really not that much. It's no more time than I spend on some of the sprites for our game. Um, so I think it was time well spent. So like I mentioned before, I've been working on just a lot of fishing stuff this last week. Of course, like I said before, I made like the fishing pole, I made a few different kinds of fish just for kind of proof of concept at this point, and then we'll add more once we get it up and running. I also made um, sailboats earlier, and I did actually get footage of that, so I might have to share that. But we thought, you know, for our, our coastal city, it's supposed to be like a bustling seaport, but it really, it lacks the bustling quality if you don't have like ships coming and going. So I did make like a big sailboat. So other than that, I've actually been doing a lot of writing lately for our game. And that's one thing that you can't really record and share, but at least I can give you a brief over overview. I mean, I guess I could record it and share it, but I think that would be um, tedious to say the least. <laughs> and not at all entertaining. But one thing, of course, we've got to put in, you've got to plug in all of the characters, their, their routines, their schedules. So I've been working on that. And once those are in, it'll be easier to write the dialogue. Because once you know where a character is and who they're with, it's a lot easier to write dialogue for them. So I've been putting in as many of those as I, uh, as many of those characters as I can. Um, I've finished most of One Kingdom at this point, and hopefully I'll get that wrapped up here fairly shortly. But other than that, we're also starting to work on cutscenes because, of course, a lot of the plot of a game is communicated through cutscenes, and we don't have any yet. Um, so the one that we're working on right off the bat, again, is kind of a proof of concept. We're going to be doing the opening cutscene. So basically, uh, you know, it's like the tutorial cutscene when you first start, you first start the game and you start learning the ropes. And so I was kind of scripting that out so we'd have some, you know, bones to work off of. And so I spent a few days on that. And that was actually a little bit trickier, I think, than I thought it was going to be. Um, not the writing stuff per se. I mean, I know how to write. Like I can, <laughs> I can, I can come up with a script. But I, the hard part was making the tutorial bits sound somewhat natural. I felt like the hardest bit was trying to keep the dialogue from sounding super stilted while. Um, it's Garth, you know, who basically walks you through your first few days and helps you get your get your sea legs. I, you know, I didn't want him to sound like he was reading out of a textbook. You know, he has to sound like he's actually explaining to you how to run your kingdom, how to run your farm, and how to uh, get peasants and take care of them. And I think I think it sounds pretty good. We'll see it. We'll have to see it in action and see if it. <laughs> we'll have to see it in action and see if it communicates well. Um, but actually, you know, it was pretty. It was pretty fun to do. So, and it was nice to have something other than the art to do as well. Um, I really enjoy, you know, building the plot and developing the characters, and so that's that's fun to put my stamp on that. But as far as, like, the writing goes, I'll tell you what I'm really looking forward to. I want to get in there and write some, like, romantic dialogues. So, <laughs> in our game, I've mentioned before, you can get married. I mean, there are various bachelors and bachelorettes just ripe for the picking. And of course, they're all going to need dialogue. And I think that that's gonna be really fun to get in there and kind of explore like their different personalities and to script out like the various cutscenes. And I think that that is going to be so, so fun. Although I will say that I think my favorite characters to write are probably the more like distasteful ones. <laughs> like if they're really rude or just kind of like rub you the wrong way, then that's, that's the kind of character I like to write. I'm not exactly entirely sure what that says about me, but there you have it. Uh, I think this next week, I'll probably be doing, again, some more writing um, here and there. I am starting to work on uh, developing more assets so we can have uh, seasonal changes. So at the moment, there is, there is spring. It's spring all the time, 365 days a year. And I need to get in there and uh, create alternate versions of some of our sprites, things like uh, trees and plants. I need some alternate like ground textures. They need to make some snow and other things that might have snow on them like rocks with snow. I also thought it would be, um, I might possibly do like an alternate frozen water texture. Of course during the winter the ocean won't freeze and probably the major rivers won't freeze. Uh, but I was thinking that some of the ponds and smaller bodies of water might freeze over, which would allow you maybe to cross into other areas that you can't get to otherwise, which would just, you know, create uh, more opportunities for exploration, would just, you know, give you other places you could go. Um, so I might do that as well. I'm not sure if we'll use it, but you know, it doesn't hurt to make it anyway. 
So I imagine I'll be recording some of the more interesting bits of that process and we'll be posting it here. So it'll be, you know, a lot more drawing rocks and trees, which I actually enjoy. So hopefully you'll enjoy it too. But you know, this time instead of spring trees, we'll have like, you know, like red, orange fall trees and like snow covered trees. So it'll be like a whole new experience for you. So this piece is just about finished. So here in a second, I'll be panning across it so you can see all of the nitty gritty details. But I appreciate you joining me for another video. And I will be back probably next week <laughs> with another one. And so until then, enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you next time.